Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. Lecture number 40, the nucleus part seven. Okay, let's continue. Today, we're going to talk about nuclear fission or the splitting, splitting of an atom. Okay, really the splitting of a nucleus. Okay, we're going to use this, the fuel that's fissionable, as you'll see what that means, uh, uranium. Now, natural uranium comes in two types of isotopes. So if you take a piece of uranium from the ground, there's two isotopes of uranium. What makes uranium uranium is the 92 protons, 92, okay? There's U-235 and there's U-238. What's the difference between U-235 and U-238? The difference is three neutrons, they're isotopes, okay? If we take a piece of uranium from the ground, if we take it from the ground, 99.3% of that uranium is uranium-238. Less than 1% of the uranium is 235 uranium. Now it turns out the U-235, the stuff that's less than 1%, is the fissionable or useful material. Later, we'll see how to use the 238. But for now, we can only use less than 1% of the uranium in the ground. And remember, uranium is a finite resource. So if it's a finite resource and we can only use less than 1%, clearly, it's very, very limited. And we'll talk about that problem later on. Okay, so it's a finite resource. I said that U-235 is the fissionable stuff. Okay, now I'm gonna draw a picture. I'm gonna have the little circle be a neutron and a big circle be a U-235 nucleus. Okay, U-235 nucleus, because that's the fissionable thing. Okay, so what we're gonna look at is a neutron comes in, now it's, it's called a slow neutron. Why? What does the neutron do when it goes inside the uranium nucleus? It's nuclear physics. But if it's traveling too fast, it doesn't have time to agitate and, and to cause problems and to make this big nucleus split. So essentially, the neutron's going in, starting some gossip, making everybody hate each other, and the nucleus breaks in, not in half, but in two big pieces. So fission is the splitting of an, a, a nucleus, here uranium-235 nucleus. What comes out are two chunks, okay? These chunks are called fission products. Okay. Many times, it depends, it could break up into different things. Many times, this, these fission products, first of all, they junk. We don't need, useless to us. Uh, and typically, these junk, these uh, fission products are made of barium and krypton. So fission products, barium and krypton. All right. What I do care about, the most important part of fission, the most important part of fission is that two neutrons come out. One neutron comes in, two neutrons are emitted. Okay, so here we have same picture, small circle is a neutron, the big circle is a U-235 nucleus. This is going to be uncontrolled nuclear chain reaction. And what we get is exponential growth. So look, I'm ignoring the fission products. I don't care about that junk right now. Okay, a neutron comes in, hits the uranium-235, fission products out. What I care about is the two neutrons come out. If, if they hit two more uraniums, two more neutrons come out, and you see one neutron, two neutrons, four neutrons, eight neutrons, it's growing exponentially. And this is exactly what you want in a bomb. So this is the type of bomb that was dropped in World War II, okay? And my point, what I wrote here in red, is that neutrons, neutrons everywhere. And I'll get back to that in one second. Okay, so this is an uncontrolled chain reaction, it grows exponentially, and you just want all the energy to keep coming out and keep coming out and keep coming out. Now, what about a nuclear reactor? Well, a nuclear reactor is very simple. Well, it's not very simple, it's very complicated, but the idea is very simple. In a nuclear reactor, we want a controlled nuclear chain reaction. Okay, what that means is I have the same picture. A neutron comes in, hits a uranium-235 nucleus. Two neutrons come out. One neutron is allowed to hit another uranium. Then uh, that splits into two neutrons. One neutron is allowed to hit another uranium. One neutron is allowed. The second neutron in a series of uh, uh, nuclear engineering, right? We want the second neutron to be absorbed by these control rods. Control rods are typically made of an element such as boron. Okay, so now you see we have a linear controlled nuclear reaction. One, 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 it's controlled. Here, uncontrolled. 
So in a nuclear reactor, it's controlled. Now remember, what, what's the idea behind a reactor? The whole idea is to make electricity. You remember how to make electricity? You move coils and magnets. How do you move coils and magnets? Well, you could pedal a bicycle. You could use the wind. You could have water fall. Most of the energy we get is from steam. So you boil water. You have something to boil water. You can burn oil, mostly coal any fossil fuel to boil water, make steam. The steam goes from a hot place to a cold place, high energy state to a low energy state. And as it travels from a high energy state to a low energy state, you put a turbine in there. You put something with coils and magnets. Remember, if you move coils and magnets, you get electricity to flow. So what is a nuclear reactor? A nuclear reactor is something where this is taking place. And we'll talk about the energy and stuff like this, but every time this react, uh, nucleus fissions energy, heat is given off. And this is used then to boil water, to make steam, to move the coils and magnets. So a nuclear reactor is just a fancy tea kettle, okay? All it's doing is boiling water using radioactive samples, okay? Now here I wrote neutrons, neutrons everywhere. So let's talk about neutrons and radioactivity for a second. We said that certain isotopes, are radioactive. Not all isotopes are radioactive, right? You and I are not radioactive. We're made of oxygen, oxygen 16. What is oxygen 16? Eight protons, eight neutrons. We have nitrogen, right? Nitrogen 14, seven protons, seven neutrons. We have carbon 12, carbon, okay? Now, what happens if you add neutrons to these nuclei? Well, what happens instead of oxygen 16, you can get oxygen 17, oxygen 18. Instead of nitrogen 14, you add some neutrons, you get nitrogen 15, 16, and carbon, you can make carbon 14. What happens when you add neutrons to anything is that that anything can become radioactive. So in a nuclear reactor, what is a nuclear reactor? Well, there's a core made of metal. You put that there, you put your radioactive sample in, you let the neutrons start going, you let your process go, and what happens? What happens is the core, the metal, the zircaloy, the alloy, it is bombarded by neutrons. So the core itself becomes radioactive because they're bombarded by neutrons. The fission products, right? The uh, barium and krypton, they're just sitting around. They're fine. They get up, start absorbing neutrons. They become radioactive. The water that's cooling that, that you're using to heat, the water is being bombarded by neutrons. The water becomes radioactive. The air becomes radioactive. So when I say neutrons, neutrons everywhere, what happens in a nuclear reactor is you have all this radioactive waste that then you have to have to get rid of, okay? Now, the half-lives of some of these things, for example, if you make plutonium, the half-life of plutonium is 240,000 years, okay? So all these radioactive elements you're producing from all these neutrons all have different half-lives. What do you do like at, at, uh, in Westchester with the nuclear waste in the nuclear reactors? Okay, what do you do with the nuclear waste? Well, you could shoot it into space, but then there's space shuttle. <laughs> what happens if it crashes? Um, what do you do with this stuff? Well, what they do with it, they put it in an unmarked truck or a truck that says Twinkies, and they drive it out west and they bury it deep in Nevada, way under a mountain. As that truck drives, one better hope that it doesn't get in an accident because if it gets in an accident and that radioactive waste becomes exposed to the terrain, uh, that area will be probably uninhabitable for 20, 30 years. That stuff is not good. Radioactive material is not good. So that's a down part of uh, radioactive uh, uh, nuclear reactors. People say nuclear reactors are clean energy uh, because there's no fossil fuels, no pollution. You're not burning fossil fuels. So you get no carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, but you do have steam emitted, radioactive steam, low levels of radioactivity. But the problem is the radioactive waste. Okay, so in reactors, let's let's just review again. We're using one of the isotopes of uranium. We're using 235. Remember, it's less than 1%. Uranium is a rock that comes in the ground. And if we're going to go with nuclear and use this, we're going to run out of uranium. And that's a problem. Okay, so this is a fission bomb splitting. In the next lecture, I'll tell you about a fusion bomb. And I'll tell you a way out of... Uh, a, a way that we can maybe make, or we can make use the uranium-235. As it is, uranium-238, uh, I meant 238, uranium-238 is not fissionable. In other words, if you hit a neutron in a U-238, it does not fission and create energy. A U-235, you hit it with a neutron, it does fission and does produce energy. 
So again, this is a finite resource, right? And we can only use less than 1%. That resource will run out very quickly. So the question is, can we use this U238 and still produce energy? And I just want to say something. Uh, we, we talk about uh, nuclear bombs and things. In order for a nuclear bomb, for, for a, a uh, sample of uranium to go critical, for it to explode like a bomb, okay? Let me write this down. In order to have a bomb, and this is physics, this is not opinion. Physics says the minimum is to have about 30% enriched fuel. Okay, so you have to convert, you have to have about 30% of your fuel is uranium-235. Now, in a reactor, in our reactors, the 235 uranium is usually uh, about 3 to 5% enriched uranium, okay? So, in an ordinary first-generation reactor, there is absolutely no danger that that reactor can blow up like a mushroom cloud. And explode. Now, you could have a steam explosion, the pipes can explode, and radioactivity could be exposed, uh, again, in Westchester, can expose New York City, and we'd be really screwed, okay? But a reactor cannot explode like a bomb, because you need a minimum of 30%, and these reactors have less than 5% enriched. So you have to enrich the fuel. Remember, it's 0.7%. Let's talk for a second. If you're a neutron, Suppose you're in Grand Central and you're walking Grand Central and you're trying to find somebody from Idaho and it's less than 1%. What's your chances if it's 0.7%? Chances of you finding somebody from Idaho, virtually none. If it's 0.7%, you're going to go and you're never going to collide. So in order for a nuclear chain reaction to keep going, you need to enrich the fuel. Okay, so we, we enrich it from 0.7% to about 3 to 5%, so that the neutrons then have a better probability of finding another uranium-235. If it stayed at 0.7%, it's not going to find another uranium, and the reaction, the chain reaction will die out, okay? So you need a certain enrichment. The enrichment process where they use uranium and uh, uranium hexafluorine gas, they use gas and they use a gaseous diffusion. Anyway, enrichment, I'm just gonna write enrichment, richment costs a lot of money. When I was a child in the 1964 World's Fair, I remember they were talking about nuclear energy and nuclear power, and they said, it's gonna be so cheap, it's gonna be almost free. Well, it turns out nuclear right now is uh, probably more expensive than any other form of uh, getting energy. And there's a lot of safety things. I'll talk a bit more about safety in the next lecture. Uh, but for now, just be aware that ordinary reactors that use uranium-235 are only enriched to about 3 to 5% and so can never, ever, ever blow up like an atomic bomb. Although you can have an accident, steam accidents, like at Three Mile Island, there were accidents, there was uh, uh, feedback accidents and human error as usual. Uh, everybody knows about Chernobyl, but Chernobyl was not a nuclear explosion. Again, it was a steam explosion on, a, on a, uh, an experimental reactor. And we know that uh, many, 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 many people died and there's still people dying from the effects of the radiation. So radiation's bad stuff. Are reactors good or bad? I'll let you judge, but we'll talk more about it. And I'll talk about a fusion reactor. And then I'll talk about the atomic bombs a little more in the next lecture. Okay, see you around, stay safe, be well.